Dear viewers, welcome again. Haven't seen a long time. Welcome to the webinar of Digital Educational Hackathon. Today we're going to have interesting guests and, of course, Ask Me Anything session. Welcome again. Hello, Katerina, and hello, Bart. Nice to meet you. As always, uh, in the beginning, I will ask uh, about your background and your connection with the uh, Digital Educational Hackathon, because that's also the interesting for the viewers uh, in the beginning, uh, be before your story. Katerina, can you start, please? Hello, Bart. Thank you for the uh, invitation. Happy to be here. Hi, Bart. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm Katerina. I'm Greek. I'm the national ambassador DigiEduHack for the, this year and last year as well. I'm working in the digital education sector for 20 years. And um, I'm here to share a passion about the combination of education, digital technologies, creativity, and the vision for um, education. That's a 20 years. <laughs> it's a long time. Changes are huge. Yeah? Radical. Yeah, radical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can talk about it uh, later. Uh, thank you, Katerina Bart. What is your background? Yes, uh, my name is Bart, as you said. I also have a surname, which is a bit difficult uh, for <laughs> no, many I don't people. try to... Uh... <laughs> Versweevel, I can't help it. Uh, <laughs> thank you so, so much. So I'm from Belgium, uh, Flanders, and I will also mention some, some years. Uh, I started my career as a secondary school teacher for 30 years. And then uh, I mm. moved to, to Brussels to... Uh, uh, European School Net, which is the organization of ministries of education in Europe. Uh, but they hired me because they built on their premises the Future Classroom Lab uh, more than 10 years ago. And uh, so this is uh, what uh, my role was at the very start. They needed a teacher and I was very happy that uh, they thought of me. And uh, in those years we, we organized a few hackathons as well. Not a part of this organization, but also others with other organizations. And uh, then uh, they also asked me uh, uh, some years ago to be on the steering group uh, of uh, the uh, DG Edu Hack. Uh, and then I, I could uh, also promote the event uh, in the network of the Future Classroom Lab ambassadors. We have them in many countries. So I have been in touch with them uh, when they were doing their hackathons. And uh, so I learned quite a lot of them. Now I have the role of uh, the national uh, ambassador of uh, Belgium. And I hope uh, we have uh, many uh, organizations taking part, of course. Uh, so, but I have been uh, yeah, connected to, to Hackathon as such uh, in other organizations, as I said, but also uh, I was uh, close uh, with uh, some uh, other hosts uh, over the years. And I saw uh, so some changes, but we, I guess we can talk about it uh, later. Yes, of course. Uh, why the Hackathon is a useful tool? <laughs> Well, uh, what I heard from, from my friends is that they also shifted their view a bit uh, about uh, the hackathon. Uh, in, in the very beginning, they focused, at, like the participants also, on, on the final outcome, on the product. Uh, but now they, they all say, uh, in fact, that the process is most important. Uh, and uh, some uh, of my friends compared it uh, to a pilgrimage going to <laughs> Santiago de Compostela. Of course, that's the aim to reach uh, the final destination. But uh, you also meet, uh, uh, let's say, uh, on the road some challenges that you need to overcome. 
and, and that is, is quite uh, of value as well. Uh, and we should embrace that idea as well, that, that the process uh, is, is very important because it, it contains quite a lot of, of hidden objectives uh, that uh, uh, participants uh, maybe don't realize. They, they talk to uh, other people that they never talk to. They get out of their comfort zones, they out of their silos, uh, they, they build competencies, they build soft skills. And that is something that is also of, of uh, high value. Uh, that's, that's what uh, all my friends uh, are saying. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Katarina, but in the beginning, uh, the, there is a big mess. <laughs> I mean, how you can build up uh, the successful uh, hackathon? What are these uh, tricks and hints? For that? <laughs> Difficult to say. Uh, there is no recipe. I very much agree with uh, Bart. In the it's about the context. It eh? is it's about, about the people who are, who are, who are there. Exactly. Uh, a hackathon for me is a learning journey. It's, it's the beauty of uh, learning collaboratively together and shaping uh, a vision towards something that uh, may have a concrete shape or not. Some, some uh, challenges are more on the ideation phase, more like conceptualizing something. Some others are more product oriented. We have an idea, we give it a certain uh, shape. It doesn't matter. The learning experience is what matters and what's the most important is no matter what, you learn, learn something and you learn something on a personal level, professional level and, and uh, on a group also effort. So what is your suggestions for the group, groups in the beginning when they don't know yet? Uh, are they finished <laughs> or not with this idea what they have, I don't know, very, very uh, not shaped yet? I think it has also uh, to do with, with technology. Sometimes we view technology as a, as a product. Like you open a software, you enter in, in a given platform, it's not. It is about uh, exploring the possibilities of technologies with a group of people. So uh, being creative and trying things, it's a, thing, it's, it's a tip uh, and um, a way of uh, making an idea more concrete. Trying out. Bart, what is yeah, your suggestion? I would so like addicts. to connect uh, to it uh, that uh, in some cases we, we focus too much on the solution that uh, on technology we want to have something innovative but uh, the starting point uh, for the main part of, of the whole experience is according to me the problem it's, it's about uh, uh, looking at uh, problems in society and how can we solve them and in the second uh, stage we, we come to a solution but we should uh, focus a lot during the experience of, of a hackathon on problem solving, on, on describing certain things that uh, could be improved in society. And, and that is uh, yeah, maybe sometimes a misunderstanding with, with uh, participants that they need to be yeah, so innovative, so original. Uh, but I think that the power uh, of, of the discussions is, is starts with, with problem solving. So the, the well-described um, problem is already the <laughs> half of solutions at <laughs> least. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So what kind of uh, problems you, uh, you can mention that this was well-described, let's say, that, that was yeah, maybe something as, from the past? As I said, I have, uh, yeah, an, an, let's say, connection to, to many different types of formats and, and uh, that is, uh, I think, very important to, uh, to see the differences. I mean, uh, one of the, the tricks also to have a successful um, hackathon is to, to have a, a kind of, of plan behind it. Uh, I, I remember, for instance, if I may go back to my, my uh, teaching years, that uh, at a certain point I did not like my headmaster to come in because it was a bit of messy mm -hmm. learning, but I knew there was a plan behind it and they were all focused. And, and it, it depends on, on the audience. Uh, if you uh, would like to involve uh, students and parents, which happens in, in some hackathons, and, and uh, also people from outside, that's a different approach than like in the original days of the hackathon, you have, uh, sorry to say, uh, a few nerds around the table. They stay there the whole night with pizza. And that's, <laughs> that's uh, an, an, another type of, of approach. Uh, so 
if you uh, have, uh, let's say, different types of audiences, uh, you have to cut it into kind of slots and, and bring it back to their uh, world also as well. And, and if you uh, involve younger students, I think they should be the main uh, starting point uh, to, uh, to describe the problem, what they see in their environment, what they uh, would like to, to change and, and not uh, some, uh, yeah, uh, let's say industry partner, which also have a big value, of course, uh, that, that immediately come with, with uh, to, uh, um, to high level uh, solutions already. So it should uh, start uh, from, it should really be grassroots uh, from uh, starting part from the participants, what, what they discover in, the, in their uh, daily life, what, what could be changed. Uh, so that's what I, but of course we have some themes in the, in the DJ Hackathon, which direct already a bit in, in the, yeah, the direction that uh, they, they choose for themselves. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Katerina. Uh, we will wait you back in, into this uh, studio and uh, dear viewers, after the short break, we're going to have the new guests here in the studio. We will proceed with the webinar of Digital Educational Hackathon. Welcome back. Now the new guests, welcome, are the Juhani and Victoria. He hello to you through the web, through the digital channel. Hello, hello. Hello, Mark. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks to you for, for coming. Um, what is the topic uh, with you? You already know. This is uh, the specific tools and uh, platforms. How to make this uh, digital educational hackathon um, with the best outcome ever can, can be. So um, let's start from Victoria. Um, what are these specific uh, possible uh, tools and platforms uh, you use and you can suggest for the others as well. Well, uh, first of all, uh, for us, it was uh, kind of new to participate in this uh, hackathon for the first time last year. And uh, uh, although we had participated previously in some local 
hackathons with colleagues from different organizations, but especially in DG Ed Hack, it was kind of new. And of course, we started with the uh, students from our university, as the uh, Future Classroom Lab is uh, situated in the pedagogical university, and students from uh, uh, schools. So, of course, they all are very well digitalized and know tools and uh, uh, how to use them. So, we kind of didn't have this much of the problem, uh, even though uh, we asked them not to use so many tools as to focus more on the solution. Uh, but they still uh, uh, wanted to, to be very uh, involved or very uh, di uh, different from others in uh, using uh, the digital skills and the uh, online uh, tools uh, of different kinds. Um, as I said, the problem for us, or at least the concern that they had for us, was more focusing on solutions. So that's why uh, uh, we we ask them more to uh, avoid the or to at least try to not uh, uh, focus on the visual aid so much rather than on the solution, the engagement, the the way to present it, in, and the the way to be uh, convincing and persuading the judges. Um, Victoria, I'm yes. sorry. In the beginning, normally I ask who you are, because I know who you are. Uh, <laughs> I've seen your CV, but, uh, and Johannes as well, but, uh, but uh, not all the viewers. We will proceed with uh, questions of uh, different platforms. And also, the, as you said, there are the um, possibilities that the, 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 it's going to be overused. But, uh, Victoria, what is your background and uh, your connection with the Digital Education Hackathon? The same question will be first for the Johanny, of course. You, you can be prepared. Yeah, um, uh, at the moment I'm the Managing Director at the National Center for Digital Innovations in Education, Future Classroom Lab. Uh, which is situated in the pedagogical university and uh, I but I have the passion for education and technology for about 19 years uh, so far <laughs> and uh, I have a, a team of 19 very passionate people here who struggle to develop and to advance digital innovations in Moldovan educational system well uh, at the center we have different projects first of all on uh, 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 in schools we have 123 schools in our country that have uh, fcl laboratories so we provide in uh, trainings for uh, teachers for students basically on uh, digital education and technologies and I am a strong advocate for educational transformation in general. So DJ the Hack Hackathon, um, you know, uh, came to us as, you know, very uh, uh, in the right place, as a puzzle in the right place last year. And uh, we are very happy to be part of it. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, Johanny, the same question for you, who you are <laughs> in the beginning. And then uh, <laughs> what is your concernings or suggestions uh, about the platforms and uh, all these uh, specific tools uh, in the digital education hackathon. Hello everybody, uh, joining you from Turku, Finland. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of EduCrafter. We're a private company based here in Finland and working to innovate education. And at the early stage, when we um, started with our uh, company, we also entered a hackathon as participants and uh, it was a strong experience to realize that something like this is uh, definitely needed in education bringing different stakeholder groups together uh, and through this intensive uh, process find new solutions uh, for educational uh, problems as well and then we started running our own uh, hackathons called eduhack.fi uh, happy to share more about this experience and um, going into into details and and uh, some tips as well um, currently uh, we are doing uh, coaching programs uh, we work also on, on innovation hubs in education uh, 
uh, and operate as uh, consultants in uh, many different international projects. And this is what brings me here as well. So our company is supporting uh, two of the European Commission's initiatives, one of them being this one, uh, the Digital Education Hackathon. And the other one is the European Digital Education Hub, which is um, over 5,000 members already uh, across the EU. Uh, they come together online, mostly, uh, to uh, learn from each other uh, across borders uh, and, and uh, across sectors as well, uh, and to innovate digital education, uh, creating best practices. And this is where we come in, in the picture as well. Uh, we're running an accelerator program as part of the hub, and this year uh, we're supporting eight uh, innovative edtech solutions to scale their solutions uh, across the seas. Um, and if I go to the uh, more uh, specific examples of uh, different platforms, then in our hackathons, what we have used is for sure uh, Google. It can be something else as well, but to provide uh, the opportunity of uh, sharing um, documents, uh, tables, presentations easily over the cloud. So this is something that I would recommend. Uh, second concrete example is a Miro um, or Miro uh, online whiteboard, uh, which uh, really supports um, both the kind of creativity, uh, so uh, laying out your ideas uh, and then later on start uh, uh, formulating them, uh, deciding which ones should we move forward with. Uh, it has a lot of different templates uh, that you can use at the early stage of the design or to create a timeline or, or uh, some uh, project uh, plans uh, for, for your solution. So highly recommended. Uh, a new one that I haven't yet used in the hackathon context, but I would uh, still um, give it a try, is called Kialo Edu. Uh, this is a platform for argumentation in classroom. And what I see interesting here is that um, it supports being anonymous which sometimes might be difficult if we think of, let's say, students, younger age even, uh, or why not us adults, uh, sometimes to share our ideas uh, with our own name or face uh, might be stopping us. So having a platform where you can uh, be just behind a username, um, that usually supports um, the, the ideation phase uh, quite a lot. And on this platform, um, uh, you can have pros and cons, so, for example, a team has already some ideas developed. Uh, they could then um, have a, a, a voting or debate going on, which ones are actually uh, good ideas to move forward and which ones should we drop. So I see that this could be used uh, quite nicely. So this last one and was about not... this. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, yep. This last one was about this argumenting and also the choosing the possible ways to go further. Yes in this uh, project. Yes, Thank yes, you so exactly, much. I exactly. think that which is me which is which is uh, very relevant uh, at uh, at least at the later stage or uh, what uh, we heard from Bart uh, defining the problem clearly is is crucial in a hackathon to to be on the kind of same side uh, as a team and identifying what is the problem that we actually should be solving. So in the ask me anything session all the viewers can um, ask uh, exact uh, websites or exact links, uh, to, uh, so don't hesitate to do it from the Johani. Uh, Victoria, um, do you want to add something about this, uh, these communication tools which um, can optimize or, I don't know, to make the better way to work these, uh, these groups uh, during digital education hackathons? Uh, well, uh, first of all, communication and interacting uh, between teams and between themselves is very important and this should be assured uh, in a small plan beforehand. So that's why we had some uh, sessions of um, uh, mentors who prepared some plans for them, especially in interacting and communicating between teams and between participants, because we chose the, uh, the possibility of 24 hours. So we had people, five people per group, and they had to change uh, the period of relaxation and work. So that's why they had to be in 
contact with each other. That's why uh, in those small plans of our mentors, they included uh, different types of uh, project management tools. So they chose the Trello uh, that was more convenient for them. And uh, they also communicated through uh, 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 Microsoft Teams uh, when they needed to have sessions. Uh, but collaboration and communication platforms, of course, can be chosen at, uh, at your own convenience. It's different kinds of... Uh, the most important thing is that they have to, to have a plan about these communication interactions uh, and the period of time when they are relaxing or when they are interacting between each other because they had to uh, take decisions together. So uh, uh, once they connect together, they need to uh, provide uh, the ideas and the decisions uh, in common. So that's why uh, uh, the instrument should be chosen in that small plan common for everyone. That's the one uh, thing you, it, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 you, you can proceed then I have the question. Yeah. Um, uh, Microsoft Teams was for us uh, the most imp uh, common and the Trello for the organizing the ideas. There was one very, very important thing you said, uh, we, we haven't talked about it uh, before, that you need to plan also your relaxing period into this uh, hackathon. This is well, the one suggestion is also for the mentors and uh, for these a people who lead. A very good one, by the way. Yeah? A very good one. This is uh, the idea that gave us our colleagues. Uh, they uh, also were hosting a hackathon for the first time last year in the southern part of the country. So we, we had a meeting. We decided how is it better to approach uh, the organization, logistics and everything. So we decided together to start with a small plan on uh, communicating between uh, participants, between teams, and that's why we organized five uh, sessions of mentorship when mentors organized the uh, time for, the, for participants. Because partic we had 40 participants on our premises, we, are, we have eight spaces, so 40 people were divided into eight groups five per group, and then they had uh, received the plan on uh, time when they gather all together obligatorily, time when two are relaxing, five are working, and vice versa, and also the communication tools and the uh, messages that they had to respond uh, all together. So we paid very much attention on the relaxation time and on uh, security reasons, because it was sort of 24 hours, they had to stay here, and this is a public building, you know, uh, and uh, we, we had to take care of all of these students, and uh, they also needed some fresh air and some um, quiet place to relax. So all of these were taken into consideration beforehand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Johan, do you want to add something uh, uh, for the Victoria's um, uh, talking points or...? Uh, um, well, if we think about the communication then um, and, and still the platforms, uh, I think um, from our experience, it's good also to familiarize with the uh, different solutions, software platforms, whatever you're using. Uh, we have this experience of uh, of a mini version. It was just a couple of hours of hackathon, a pilot uh, with a small group, but we uh, then uh, uh, introduced a new platform that for them. Uh, these participants had never used it before, and that kind of added the, the level of chaos uh, <laughs> to their experience. Um, if you want this, then of course uh, it, it's something you can try, but I would recommend that um, the participants uh, and also the operational team, the organizing team knows uh, the different software that you're using, uh, makes uh, the life a bit easier through this. Um, and yeah, I agree with Victoria, these uh, tools that you shared, uh, I see them very useful uh, for both the organizing uh, party so the team behind the hackathon and for the participants as well to use. I would add maybe some uh, fast communication channels there. That could be Slack or, or Discord. Uh, and these are also very useful uh, for teaming up phase. So I have the experience of entering a new hackathon uh, and trying to find team members uh, to my 
to my team. Um, we were uh, short of some uh, roles, some um, expertise. And, and through these kinds of platforms, you can kind of shout out, uh, say uh, what type of uh, people would you be interested in having in your team? And uh, this was proving as a, as a good case. So uh, we got a couple of new team members in this hackathon uh, through just communicating through a, a communication platform. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Victoria. And thank you, Johanny. We will wait you back uh, soon in the next session. Thank you, viewers. And a little short break, then we start again. Welcome back. And all the guests you already know, they are here and we will proceed with our uh, session. The first question uh, goes to, to the, um, Katerina. And uh, Katerina, did you have any unexpected cases during the hackathon you, you want to share with us? Uh, Mart, did you have unexpected uh, situations in your life. Oh, of course. always, always. <laughs> Even during this recording, when I can't like pronounce it. the word I want to say. Of oh. course. Yes. It happens yes, to me course. as well. How uh, you yeah, solve, solve a it. A hackathon <laughs> is, is a learning journey. I, I like to say it's a learning party. Uh, and um, I, I see uh, Johanny uh, nodding and Victoria as well. <laughs> it's uh, We shouldn't focus too much on, on the risks and the unexpected situations that may occur. Uh, the beauty of it is uh, to build the skill of resilience, agility, creativity, to go around the unexpectedness that will and occur for sure. Yeah. Flexibility, of course. I have, um, I'm saying it's, it's like a party because you start by organizing a party you plan it well, but however, unexpected may, may occur. And this is a perfect uh, ground for cool stories or nice stories to narrate after the end, uh, after many years that you organized this, uh, this party. And now uh, I, I have stories to share, uh, like uh, people who were, uh, were uh, planned to be there and never came, which is a very, very typical. I think uh, very rarely you have people who have 
regularly participate in, in hackathons, uh, like myself as a participant, as a host, as a mentor, that had a fixed group that started from A to Z, never. Uh, there are so many things, and um, uh, especially during COVID, that was so usual that the people that were supposed to come never came due to unforeseen reasons. But this is not a problem. There's a, the, the common Slack group that you can call for uh, people to help, the, the, the mentors and all these good vibes of the other teams. And it, that, that's, uh, so at the very end, you remember the fun uh, out of, uh, of this learning journey and not necessarily what went, went uh, wrong. Yes, of course. And it's uh, never went wrong because <laughs> they're ending up with a whatever kind of solution, exactly. kind of the teamwork uh, exactly. result. The, the, the teamwork is fantastic and uh, uh, the purest uh, outcome and the best uh, to me is, is the learning uh, that happens collaboratively. Yes, of course. Um, Victoria and Johanny, the same question to you that uh, do you remember some cases or some solutions during the hackathons, which are a little bit unexpected, but uh, interesting that there are kind of the learning points, Victoria. Yes, yeah, so as I said, uh, because we had this planning beforehand, it helped us a little bit to divide people into groups correctly or correspondingly. But we had a situation when uh, two from the participants wanted to be in two groups simultaneously. Uh, and they even asked additionally, how is it possible? Well, of course, for the mentorship sessions and for the preparations, we permitted them and it's actually okay for them to participate with ideas in both uh, groups. So in general, it happened that two groups competed between themselves at the end, but colleagues or participants were from the same group. It was very interesting to see the speech in the uh, fin final uh, presentation session. Uh, when they uh, um, interacted with each other, one team on the stage, the other team looking and ask, uh, asking questions. Uh, so this small competition between themselves was very interesting. But it was friendly and it was this pleasure of uh, interacting, communicating, befriending, sharing experience and then at the end they um, uh, went both teams on the stage they even gave each other hugs and accepted that both ideas and both solutions were uh, good as as uh, presented and the judges also noticed that <laughs> communication that's a good story so we we started as competitors and then we ended up by combining two groups in one most probably they will come this year together wonderful wonderful thank you victoria uh Yuhani, i know that you 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 need to leave uh, our session a little bit earlier but uh do, do you have some uh, experience or or some uh, memories about that little bit unexpected situations uh, first comment, I, I'm happy to stay as long as needed, so uh, no rush from my side. Uh, I think I can organize uh, the uh, rest of the day schedule uh, quite nicely. Um, surprises um, in our events, um, they also are connected with uh, teamwork. It's, it's always uh, the unexpected uh, how the process and uh, roles and responsibilities and the uh, communication uh, goes within one team, uh, four or five people uh, intensively working on this. So in our events, we've had these experiences of teams almost, almost uh, kind of collapsing or, or splitting, uh, not, not working until the end. Uh, but uh, when they are uh, the organizing team, uh, so the coaches, mentors uh, are present, uh, notice this uh, soon enough and, and intervene in a supportive way. Uh, this is our experience to support them uh, to go uh, all the way until the end. So in all our events, uh, we have all the participating teams giving a pitch at the end. And I think that's one success factor, I would say. So, so that despite the difficulties along the way and in the process, uh, they have all uh, gotten to the end and, and given their presentation. So I think that's a fantastic outcome. Thank you so much, Johanny, because uh, 
I was thinking that how to build a bridge now between the pitch, what is our session topic right now, <laughs> uh, be, and <laughs> uh, between go. case studies and stories. And you, you built it already. So, so I can go further and ask from Bart that uh, what are these good hints and um, best practices? But yeah, you can I suggest. want to, to say that uh, in general uh, the hackathon is uh, not only creation but also communication and uh, the pitch is of course one uh, final uh, stage in the communication but I wanted to say before I uh, dive into the pitch uh, that also part of the scenario of the experience there should be uh, communication moments throughout those 12 hours or 24 hours and that is what I hear from all hosts that gives fuel to the teams. They, they want to have the feeling that they are part of a bigger story. They want, don't want to be isolated, especially if they work online. They really want to, uh, to know what other teams uh, are doing in their own organization and also uh, uh, beyond uh, in, in uh, let's say, uh, in other European countries, which is not always possible. But still, uh, those uh, formal or uh, informal moments of communication with other teams that should be built in, into the scenario of, of a hackathon. And uh, as I said, uh, that uh, gives uh, fuel, they, they gives new energy. These need to be planned already yes, before. Uh, well, yeah. we, we need a, a flexible... Otherwise we... Indeed, we, we need to have, a, a, let's it. say, a flexible scenario mm -hmm. where also these moments of working in the group, uh, of course, make a part of. Uh, but also like, like those interaction moments, but also input. Uh, and and uh, that could also be a moment uh, to, uh, to dive into the, the powerful way of presenting uh, a pitch that, that should also, they should also be trained. They should also know what is important for the judges. They should also be aware of, of the rubrics that uh, judges uh, use. Uh, but uh, yeah, they should be, be trained uh, because I want to also make a comparison with, with uh, my work that I did in the past to, to judge uh, like projects for teachers, also competition like for e twinning for instance. And I'm quite sure that very, very good projects did not win because they did not provide the right documentation. And, and that is a pity, of course. They say, yeah, but we had a, a fantastic experience. Yeah, the judges only see <laughs> this. That's part of the game. Yeah, and and, yeah. and they should be trained to do it in, in the best way. And, and uh, so many uh, nowadays uh, have this input of a workshop of how to provide a good uh, pitch. And sometimes they, they have uh, yeah, someone who is uh, yeah, knowledgeable in, in that field, but, but you could also do it uh, yourself. That uh, it's, it's not only... You need to believe it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you, yeah, they have some elements. And, and yeah, if you go to ChatGPT, you will find all those animals <laughs> in a moment. Uh, but you need to surprise the audience. But uh, what uh, one uh, of, of my host friends did was to use, in fact, also the, one of the, the elements of the design thinking to, to have a kind of re rehearsal and, and send out one team member of another team to a group to, to hear how the, uh, the speech would, uh, or the pitch would look like, give feedback, and then they could rework it uh, a bit. So that, that could be one technique to, to have it uh, as good as possible. But yeah, those ingredients, those elements that should be clear, and, and then I come back again to, uh, to what I said in the beginning, that is not only about the solution, which is in many cases, we have to admit it, it's something yeah, they, they don't really master because they, they don't have uh, yeah, the technical knowledge to, to bring it into practice. They, they talk about something that maybe is not uh, something that you can bring into practice, but it should uh, focus on, on the, the problem and, and what they discussed. And, and so the whole process, but, but that is something that should be uh, shared with, with all the participants in a kind of workshop uh, before, during. Uh, so they need input and they need also uh, to be aware of how judges will look at, at their speech. Uh, it, it's not only about uh, yeah, uh, the, the content, but also surprising people and, and having those, those typical elements uh, and you will know Cut better. Cut attention. Uh, yeah. yeah, indeed. Uh, Hard to. You, you might Get give a workshop attention. on this, I guess. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, Katarina, some uh, hints and tips and I have some extra question uh, for you and uh, later for the Victoria and also for the Johanne. That, uh, after this pitch and after this hackathon, kind of hackathon is over. But there's need to be some follow-up 
the steps. Oh, wow. So the first is hints and tips, and then the what to do after the hackathon. Okay. The the tip for a good pitch is always give pitches to new hackathons. Because giving a pitch is something that nobody can advise you how to, uh, how to do best. Uh, it is a very uh, specific skill and that, to me, you can only learn in a real-life situation of a hackathon. Okay? No matter the advice people will give you or how many YouTube videos you will watch to, to improve this, it is it's a matter of context, pressure, situation, team, etc. So and your own uh, mood also. Of course, <laughs> it's basic, a matter of basic, vibes. The so, mood of the group. Uh, also. The tip is go to hackathons. It's a perfect ground to develop your pitching skills. Now, what comes next is my advice: never give up. Uh, a hackathon ends, but another learning opportunity shows up either in the form of, of a hackathon again, or perhaps a workshop, or a talk, or um, a design thinking uh, event. Uh, never lose sight of this idea that perhaps started for a hackathon, but it will be developed uh, through, uh, through, through lifetime. It doesn't mean that it will be this idea only that will pursue, perhaps the idea will be shaped, will change, but do not lose sight of, um, of, of the beautiful journey that hackathon is a piece of, you know, it's not the end. It's, uh, it's a piece in this very beautiful uh, learning uh, journey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Same question to the Victoria. Hints and then also the what to do or what to think after the, the hackathon. Well, as I said earlier, a very good hint is to prepare beforehand. Operationally, logistically, everything should be arranged very long in a uh, before. But about the pitch, least, about the pitch, yeah. And the the pitch uh, is the you know the cherry on the cake. Uh, regarding the the uh, communication that they uh, have on the stage, well, as as for everyone. When they are in the room, they have new ideas, they are very creative. Once they go on the stage, it's kind of difficult. So the pitch should be very short, concise, focused. Uh, they have to articulate clearly and to be concentrated on the solution rather than on a lot of talking and technical things like uh, very much on PPTs or visual aids. And of course, they have to interact with the jury. They have to be very active in addressing questions or being on the same uh, page with the audience. So once the audience wants to address questions, they have to be very um, uh, disposable to, to offer, to interrupt and to uh, interact with the audience. And of course, it has to be interactive. Uh, we, we had these, as I said, those two teams who wanted to uh, present together, so they interacted with each other, and this is how they provided better solution and better presence in front of the jury, and that was actually the problem for the jury, because they didn't know how to uh, measure points for them. Um, and also, as a follow-up at the end, uh, we gathered all participants and wanted them not only to fulfill or to fill out the formula or uh, questionnaire, but wanted them uh, to share in a circle uh, orally their opinions. So then is what we discovered a lot. And uh, But these are some small secrets uh, for us in the new edition not to... Um, uh, mention them or to pay attention not to to have the same mistake. Well, uh, maintaining this engagement, we also organized a group uh, on uh, social uh, media with them. So that as far as I know, they interact between each other and many of them would like to participate this year as well. And um, uh, inviting them to some other events as volunteers or participants uh, last year, some of them also wanted to participate. So we already have a community, let's say so. Wonderful, wonderful. And the community is also the basis uh, uh, before and after activities um, 
of webinar. Uh, uh, hackathon, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the webinar. Uh, thank you. Uh, Johani, your some hints, tips and... Tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the follow-up. Yes. So, um, for the pitching, uh, three S's. Smile, <laughs> slow, and silence. A uh, smile opens up the channel with your audience. It also uh, shows that you uh, like or love uh, what you're presenting there. Uh, slow. Uh, if you have, let's say, three minutes, it's better not to pack it up and be like a robotic uh, trying to uh, speed up your talk, but actually cut something off and focus on the main points. Uh, and silence. Uh, does basically the same. So leave some gaps uh, with those uh, main ingredients in your pitch that you really want to kind of drop for the audience. Uh, and practice. And I would uh, encourage you to practice 20 times. Then 20 when times, you go on stage, yeah. you actually note, yes, uh, you can keep number, just, mm -hmm. you know, put it down on a, on a paper that you've actually talked it through 20 times before you go on stage. When you do that, you are really prepared. You don't have to worry about the clock. You know exactly how it runs, uh, what to say next. And uh, it's actually very enjoyable. You just uh, go with the flow and enjoy that moment on the stage. I, I have been there, can say from experience. Thank you so much, Johanny. Uh, uh, for the, for the follow-up, if, if I may continue, if yes, we have yes. some time. We still. have some, one minute. You know. So, okay. I would uh, suggest this for the organizers to think uh, what will happen after the hackathon with the solutions and teams. Uh, our experience that is that it could be with uh, some partners, some sponsors of your event. Um, they could uh, invite uh, the winning teams to their office, uh, for example, and, and uh, have a workshop session or, or discussion at least on this idea. And um, could they be interested in, in supporting it somehow, making it more uh, concrete uh, and, and sustainable even. And the other things are what we are doing as part of the hub. So accelerator program or an incubator program. So uh, look out those that are running in your local area and, and try to create connections with these uh, organizers of such programs. And, and maybe you could uh, create a partnership or some collaboration. Thank you, Johanne. And thank you all guests. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Katarina. to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Victoria. And uh, you don't go anywhere, because uh, Ask Me Anything session will, mm -hmm. uh, will start. <laughs> and all the, all the future participants can ask anything. Also about the links, the sources, uh, and about your experience. Thank you so much, uh, so much for coming. And thank you, dear viewers. We will meet you soon.